Hi, I'm Jan and this is Jan Explains. In today's episode, we are exploring Confluence whiteboards. I show you the diverse use and highlight the seamless integration with Jira, which I really love. Are you ready? Let's go. Whiteboards became really popular in the last, I would say, two to four years. Miro, for example, or Figma, which is more of a mock-up and design tool. However, we are using it all the time and I really love it. And yeah, Atlassian also provides whiteboards now in Confluence. It, they are now out of beta. They're general available. And I want to start with some interesting facts. As you can see here, um, there is a support page and um, here you can see different I would say like tiers of uh, or editions of uh, those whiteboards. So if you are using Confluence for free, so this means up to 10 users, um, then there is there are some limits like only three active whiteboards per user. There are really cool Jira integrations that are missing that I will show you today. Um, so yeah, the free plan is really only about a small amount of whiteboards and that's it. And the standard plan already provides you with the Jira functionality and only starting from premium and then going to enterprise, you will, yeah, experience um, the whiteboards as I would say um, they were meant um, to be experienced. And so, yeah, I think this is really important to understand. And now let's have a look what we can do with those whiteboards. There are two ways to create a whiteboard. Either click on the main create button here in the top navigation and then select whiteboard or what I prefer, go to the sidebar, select the page that should be the parent page for your new whiteboard and then simply click on the plus. So let's do it right here. Click on plus whiteboard and there you go. Your new whiteboard is ready for use. Now that we have created our whiteboard, there are two things that I want to mention first. So first of all, we are able to hover above our name and then enter a new name for our whiteboard. So for example, we will call that Jan explains whiteboard and then him, uh, simply ent hit the enter key and then you have renamed your whiteboard. And as you can see here in the yeah, page tree on the left side, it's also updated. And the second thing that I want to mention is actually here in the page tree. As you can see, this is a page and those three here down below, they are all whiteboards and um, whiteboards always have this um, logo at the front. And this is uh, where you can directly uh, recognize that this is not a page, but a whiteboard. All right. So now let's have a look how to navigate in the whiteboard. There are several ways on how to navigate your whiteboard. I just want to show you my recommendation. So right now I have my cursor, which is in select mode. I can drag and drop everything where I want. Then I can hold down the right mouse button to drag and drop my entire canvas. And when I hold um, the command key and my and moving my mouse wheel up and down, I can zoom in and zoom out. So this is how I recommend to use it. So now, if you are new to whiteboards, you um, want to experience all the cool templates that are available, which I totally understand. I did the same. There are two ways. You can click here on templates to come back to this uh, uh, template dialog, or you can click here to on more and then on templates. It's the same. And now I can select from all those beautiful, nice templates. I will insert this one right here. And now you can see it's a quite huge one and it didn't replace my content that I have added before. As you can see here on my left side, it's still here. So it's really important to understand that using templates is not replacing your content, but it's added to your existing content. Let me show you once more another one right here. And now we zoom in and we can see a zoom out and we can see that it has been placed on the right side. 
Now, if you have inserted so many templates that, yeah, everything's overwhelming, there's too much content on it, maybe you want to start from scratch again, what you can do is you can zoom out and then just highlight, for example, everything and hit the delete key. And now everything is clean, it's fresh, and we can start um, checking out the toolbar down here. You can insert many different elements in your whiteboard, and this is where this toolbar comes in handy. So for example, I can insert uh, sticky notes, I can insert text fields, shapes, different kinds of lines and arrows. Of course, I can also add, for example, images, or I can drag and drop them. Let me quickly do that here. And now you see it's being uploaded, and then you can use this funny picture of me and then, for example, scale it down and so on and so on. So this is how basically you add things to your whiteboard. Now, those different elements have also different um, aspects. So for example, the sticky note, let's double click in here. So I can now enter a text. So I will call this marketing. And now what we can do is we can use this inline editor, which is really easy to understand. Um, and for example, what I really like is to be able to click on this plus right here. And this will now add a new um, sticky note with the same design. And I can now go on and say um, or enter whatever I want. And you see that they are now connected. They're really connected. So it means if I move this around, this arrow stays connected. I can also click on this arrow, which is exactly the same as this one or this one right here. And I can now also alter the design of this arrow. For example, I want to have it one way. And now you see this arrow is gone and it's ha it has one way. I can also click on this arrow and delete it. So this is also possible. Um, what you can also do is um, if you have already placed two sticky notes, you can insert um, this one right here, this uh, line tool, and then just connect them. As you can see here, just drag and drop. And then I can, yeah, again, connect them as before. Um, with the shapes, there is something um, that is, I think, quite important. So first of all, you can select from different shapes, as you can see here. Um, let me stick to this one here. And now I can, as you can see, resize them. But um, yeah, the, the shape um, is different. So if you want that the shape um, stays the way that it is. So if I use this one right here and I want to just make it bigger, but everything should be the same, then simply hold down your shift key. And then you see that it scales without destroying the proportions. Um, yeah, what else can we do? Um, um, the same uh, as with the sticky notes, we can use different colors um, and different formatting options. And there is something that I really like that I really want to show you, which is my personal highlight. This is the connection between whiteboards and Jira. So I have prepared this very simple sticky note. I just click on that and then you can see there's this button create a Jira issue. Let me hit that. Now you see I can select where a Jira issue should be created. I can select the project, the issue type, I select task. And you see the summary is the exact same text that I have inserted in my sticky note. I can also show more fields, but I think we are good for now. Let's hit create. And now see what happens. The sticky note got converted into a real Jira issue. The Jira issue also has been created in Jira. So this is, first of all, really fantastic. And I have cool options right here. So first of all, we can um, alter the design. We can display it as a URL, as a card, and as uh, an embedded view, actually, of my Jira issue. Let's check this out. Now you see this is like the real issue view from Jira and the cool thing I think this is pretty insane is that yeah it's um it's it's like an iframe and now you are able to select everything right from here I can now uh, transition my Jira issue I can see all the comments I can actually also comment so I have all the possibilities that I have in Jira right here from Confluence in my um 
in my whiteboard. So also imagine if you have other apps in Jira in place, you can also maybe use them right from this toolbar. So this is really nice. However, I think that you don't really need to display it like this. I think you will always display it as a card because there is this preview here. And in this preview, I can also do everything that I want. However, I really love this. Now what I want to show you is the next step. This is for me the game changer. This is my personal highlight. Those are called smart sections. All right, to show you smart sections, I will prepare some things. So first of all, we see that we have uh, four different tasks in here. So let me highlight them all at once. And now I can also create four uh, multiple Jira issues at once, which is pretty insane once again. So let me hit the create button right here. Now we have more cards in here that we can use. And let's say we have maybe three different um, uh, co-workers working together. Um, I will use some stamps. Yes, you can also use stamps, for example. So this is, oops, this is my number one. This is the second one. And then on the left side, we have the third one. All right. Now, what I want to do is I want to use those smart sections. So click here on this section and now click in your whiteboard and give this a name. And so this is um, Andrew. And Andrew, this is the, the section of, uh, of Andrew. And now I can create an, an action. So let's do that. And now I can say that if a Jira issue is dragged and dropped into this section, I want that something happens. And what I want to do is I want that tasks should be assigned to, and in this case, I only have one user in this uh, system. So Jan is now Andrew. And now let's hit save. And now you can see that if, for example, I or we as a team are talking about um, planning our um, next task and who will do which task, which I can do now in real time, um, I'm able to drag and drop this task B and I want that Jan, or in this case, Andrew, uh, will be the assignee. Just drag and drop it in here. And maybe you already saw it. My avatar already appeared and this is how the assignee changed automatically based on this smart section. And I think this is really insane. This is the game changer that I wanted to really highlight because it's not only the assignee that I can um, automate. I can also automate many other things. For example, maybe I want labels to be added. So let's say we have a, a marketing label and maybe we have a Batman label and um, we, have, we hit save. And now if I uh, use this task A and put it in here, those two labels are now automatically assigned or added to this um, yeah, issue. So I think this is really a really nice aspect of whiteboards, which as I told you is only available on um, standard and higher. So on free, this is uh, limited. It's not available. And yeah, I, I can just repeat myself. I love it. One last feature that I want to mention is that you can not only create new Jira issues out of uh, whiteboards, you can also import existing ones by clicking here on import Jira issues. I will now select this project, select all of the existing issues, import them, and there you go. This is phenomenal. All right, I hope that this video really helped you to get everything out of Confluence Whiteboards. I'm really excited about this feature. I think you saw that. If you want to support me, hit like and subscribe and also make sure to check out my apps in the Atlassian Marketplace. Thank you so much. Until next time.